Um, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Harshit. Uh, I'm a, a tech lead at Blinkit, uh, currently uh, leading search team there. And I'm very excited to be part of OpenSearchCon today here. So today I will be like talking about uh, how basically we enhance our uh, search performance uh, with the open search and like how we are operating such a high scale and uh, what kind of tuning we did with our uh, cluster. So um, first I will be talking about like uh, what's Blinkit, like about the Blinkit. Then uh, I will be covering then uh, how uh, open search is being used at Blinkit. Then uh, what kind of challenges did we faced? And then uh, after that, the optimizations which we did to solve those uh, challenges and uh, the learn and at the end we'll conclude with some learnings uh, which I would like to share with you all. All right. So about Blinkit, uh, basically Blinkit is a like quick commerce platform. Uh, we do have uh, one, more than one million daily transacting customers. We are like operating in uh, more than 30 plus cities in, across India. It's very much famous for the household delivery in minutes and including groceries. We do have uh, uh, more than uh, 50,000 delivery partners. And uh, we have, like, as per the latest quarter report, we, we have like more than 500 dark stores operating. All right. So um, let's first give me an overview about like how uh, high-level high architecture of how Blinkit is working. So uh, as you can see, uh, what happens like when, when a customer comes on our Blinkit app, uh, it makes a request to our aggregator service. Aggregator service is basically responsible for uh, aggregating the different kind of data, whether it could be like, like different kind of data, and show it on the app. And like uh, you can see, like search is also one of the external service, which is the part of the aggregator service as well. And like once like we uh, create that data and then show it to the customers on the app, basically they shop and check out. And like after checkout, we have this order management service where the orders are managed. And on the basis of the orders, uh, we basically emit some kind of real time updates to our uh, product store. So as you can see, like we have this inventory and pricing as a uh, external services where uh, our uh, and like the product level updates we are doing in real time to the open search. So I will be more focusing on. Um, the open search and search part, and the real-time indexing, how we are doing it. So uh, to give a brief about, like we do have a, a raw catalog uh, product, and uh, we have this indexing service, mostly, mostly responsible for the writes we do on open search. And we have like another service, search and discovery, where we do mostly uh, th that the task of that service is to just to do only reads part. Okay, so this indexing service like also preprocesses that raw data into our data model as and uh, basically the schemas which we have defined and uh, basically to fulfill our use case as per our use case. Apart from that, we do have uh, real time events consumption from the Kafka like uh, product launch like product launches, um, new product launches, then the pricing updates, inventory. The reason we do have like these kind of updates because like at the discovery part, we are uh, running search, but apart from that, we are doing multiple things, like we are doing text-based search, we are doing sorting on those results, then we are doing aggregations, then filters. For example, like if you are searching for a product, then you have to sort by price, then their uh, filters can be really handy, and like product, like prices, if they are changing, then we can do this like completely dynamically end-to-end. -end. All right, now, um, Talking numbers about like query scale and workload, we have like more than one million operations per minute, uh, which we have observed during the peak. Uh, generally, daily we um, have search queries around like 750k per minute uh, operations per minute. Uh, apart from it, we have uh, writes. We do have a daily writes of uh, around 250k writes operations per daily. These are like very closest numbers. And the latency. Talking about latency, uh, reads basically like. Generally, like uh, th those are like less than six ms, but uh, during the peak, like we, uh, like the max it goes is to six point three something. Writes we generally do like almost in one ms. So this one ms is basically for the the two fifty k like per writes which is happening, which are happening right now. So uh, talking about the cluster configuration of our, so basically we operate our product index uh, basically with the thirty data nodes. We have like that index is like around 50 GBs, 
and uh, we have two primary shards on which we do all the replication and the data distribution across the data nodes. Then we have uh, 14 running replicas of the shards. Then we also operate our cluster in a multi-AZ with three availability zones. So coming to the challenges, it was simple. Like we basically, since like uh, Blinkit is growing and uh, like with due to new product uh, iterations, like new product features getting added on the app, uh, what was happening like we were facing two challenges. We were getting a linear growth in our increase in high read latency and write latency. So uh, high read latency because uh, primarily we have one um, problem where we were getting uh, uneven traffic distribution across our data nodes, which I will be discussing uh, more in detail in the further slides. Then uh, high write latency because uh, the number of updates which we process in real time, like during festives, uh, it kind of gets uh, a lot, like we have, due to this high latency, like a lot of updates which we were receiving were uh, in, like initially creating a lag in updating those product updates. And due to that, it was degrading the experience on the overall Blinkit app. So primarily, these are the main architectural drivers. Like we wanted a low running cost infra. Uh, we wanted to reduce read and write latency. We wanted to reduce the indexing time to create that product catalog. And uh, basically, we wanted to reduce the CPU usage of the data nodes during the peak. So, the opti so first, coming to the schema level optimizations, these were the optimizations which we did uh, like to make sure like at the index level we can reduce uh, index size, uh, make writes more faster, as well as uh, make reads much more faster. So like uh, first we did was like uh, basically uh, bifurcating all those uh, index and versus the unindexed fields. Uh, index fields are those which are which create an inverted index in open search and to make that information available for the search in simple language. And unindexed were uh, those fields which are not uh, used for basically search purposes. So we did this kind of bifurcation where only a uh, field which was required to search, we uh, made it indexed and like rest unindexed. Similarly for the enabled and the disabled mappings, we did the similar practice. And also with uh, similarly with the keywords and text fields, uh, we also bifurcated like what, uh, what kind of fields do we need to actually basically make a search query on. And uh, for coming, and like for the keywords, we basically like the fields which are having keyword type, they are basically used uh, for the aggregations pur aggregation purpose. So we did that, made some decisions on the basis of that and did the bifurcation like which field will be used for aggregations, which will be for the search and we should make that as keyword or the text fields. So results was like this, like earlier, like making these changes, we observed, uh, like earlier our index size used to be around like 48 GBs, then after that making changes, it's like reduced to 32 GBs, which was like a quite a good improvement for us since we wanted to reduce the size of the index as well. Uh, apart from it, we also reduced, like we also observed a good improvement in the indexing latency where like uh, it was earlier around six MS, then it reduced to one MS. Similarly for the search latency, search latency here, uh, like there was not a drastic improvement, but uh, yeah, overall we, we saw some few kind of improvements like uh, which query, like which fields were getting searched on the basis of that we reduced, uh, like we saw a reduction in the search latency. Similarly, we did the same activity nested and the object mappings where uh, as you know, like uh, each nested object is a indexed as a separate document. So, this was a, this was like another reason where our doc count was also drastically increasing per product. So this is something what it looks like, nested versus object mapping. The results were uh, basically uh, earlier we used to have uh, 20 million documents. Now that reduced to almost like ha we basically reduced half number of documents after uh, like filtering out those whether uh, this uh, this field this field basically needs to be nested or. Uh, object mapping. All right, so these were the uh, schema level optimizations which we did to make sure uh, how we can uh, work on our write, making writes our faster and a little bit of re improvements in the reads as well. Now coming to the architecture level optimizations. So we made some architecture level um, decisions. 
uh, to reduce the read and write latency. So first was the uh, how we handle the refresh interval during our indexing. So refresh interval, basically, this operation happens internally um, in open search. The primary role of this refresh interval is to basically refresh data across the shards to make it available for the search. Now, uh, since like uh, by, by default the refresh interval of the open like in open search is like 30 seconds. Now, um, when we used to create the, this product index for our use, like as for our use case, uh, what we were experiencing like uh, we were experiencing uh, like uh, what happens like when we were indexing uh, the data to a shard, basically. Bit when this bulk write activity was happening, uh, during that time, uh, the refresh activity was also happening in parallel to that, due to which like open search basically uses a lot of resources internally uh, when the shards are refreshed. So we initially decided to keep the refresh interval uh, basically disabled initially, actually, because uh, when there will be no internal process of refresh interval going, basically it frees up a lot of resources what internally open search uses and makes our writes much more faster. And like after once the index has been created, we man like then uh, it automatically sets the refresh interval back to 30 seconds. Similarly, uh, we did some tweaks with our number of replicas. Um, so so uh, like. Earlier, we used to like create an index with some number of replicas initially. And uh, what used to happen was uh, basically assume uh, we have one primary shard and we have some number of replicas of that shard. Now, a write request comes to a primary shard, and that request is broadcasted to other replica shards. Now, also, primary shard also uh, gathers the acknowledgement from other replica shards as well. So as you can see, the time taken, like if my number of replica, replica shards are more, the time taken to get the acknowledgment back to the primary shard will take a lot of time. So to reduce this uh, acknowledgment call, call from network, like to reduce this call, basically we initially what we do, uh, we set number of replicas as zero so that all the writes happens only on the one shard. And like once the index is created, like we uh, Switch like we we increase the number of replicas like more than this like as per our use case. So in in this case basically what happens is like a lot of network call is getting saved and uh, it makes our writes more faster. So ap apart from number of replicas, um, as I mentioned, we also faced uh, uneven traffic distribution. As you can see, like we have this. Uh, Availability zones 1A, 1B, and 1C. And uh, during like festives, we used to uh, scale out our cluster by adding more data nodes to handle the traffic. And uh, as you can see, like if I add two nodes to our more two data nodes on in our cluster, what was happening like in one of the availability zone, the data nodes were experienced like it was like unequally distributed like unequal distribution. And uh, two of the data nodes you can see like in region 1C. Uh, what what is happening? They are receiving more um, throughput on them, due to which uh, high throughput was increasing the CPU utilization of these data nodes. And at the uh, application client, like at the client side, uh, we were facing some cli client timeouts uh, as well, which was like again uh, degrading the experience on the app, where like search queries were getting timed out and the users were not getting the product. So to solve this thing, uh, basically, we so as per our cluster uh, configuration, with the help of the uh, open search team, we understood, understand like how these things work. And uh, we basically, since our cluster configuration is like two primary shards and uh, uh, like two primary shards and three availability zones, we, we decided to uh, basically always uh, scale out our cluster in the multiple of three. Here you can see like, uh, if I add six nodes here, so you can see the equal distribution happens across um, region 1A, like availability zone 1A, 1B, and 1C. So these were the results where, uh, as you can see, uh, after un uh, when we were having uneven traffic distribution, you can see some of the nodes were receiving very high traffic. And uh, after, like, v v when we uh, solved this problem, we uh, started to notice the even traffic distribution across our data nodes. So with the, like, with the event distribution, the CPU utilization among the data nodes also got reduced. And like the timeouts which we were facing at the, uh, in, in the, our discovery service, uh, we were not facing that anymore. 
Okay, so um, coming to the batching. So uh, as I mentioned, like we have another use case where we consume real-time events of the products. So uh, what was what what we were doing earlier was uh, like even like if uh, one product was getting updated, we were making one call to the open search. Uh, index to update that. So by doing the one-on-one -on -one updates, we, we saw uh, like during peaks, uh, we were experiencing high disk IOPS and uh, high disk CPU utilization. So uh, due to due to this, uh, basically high disk high th this is actually the high disk write IOPS uh, because of high high write disk IOPS, there was a lag in our writes, and due to which we were not able to show customers the latest information on the app available. And the, also, like it was not consistent throughout the app. So uh, we basically did uh, solve this problem by batching. So by batching, we reduce the request, uh, write request as well as the write latency, which I will discuss more uh, here. So as you can see, like uh, we were having write latency around like it was going up to like equal to like between 15 to 20 ms, which got reduced to between uh, Zero, I think three, like between zero to five ms. It's like around two to three ms. Okay. Um, similarly, we saw a drop in our write disk IOPS, uh, where earlier it was going really high, and after when we introduced the batching, uh, it got reduced. So here, why the th there was a drastic improvement by doing such a small thing like uh, introducing batching and the write disk IOPS got reduced, because. Uh, it was generally because uh, what happens when one write happens, uh, so one, one, when one write ha is happening on disk, uh, it makes basically one flush call internally. So this flush call is very much very expensive when a data is being written to a disk. So, uh, so let's say if I am processing 100 of events, it was making 100 flush calls. So that is the reason why disk write IOPS were uh, really high. After batching, like we are processing one batch, one batch means having 100 events with a one write request. And due to that, only one flush call was being made. That is the reason uh, we, we saw a significant drop in our write disk write IOPS. So to conclude, uh, the learnings which I would like to share here, um, basically it's very much important to have knowledge of the basic index parameters, and they should be tuned properly. They look very easy to understand at the first hand, but uh, they can play a very important role how you are going to operate your cluster as per your use case. Then uh, for always follow a script schema policy for the index. Uh, you should be like very careful which field should be used for what purpose, as I mentioned in the schema optimization. Then use nested mapping only if it's required. Also, uh, even distribution of the data nodes, if uh, it should be there, if you are operating a cluster in the multi-AZ uh, mode. And always prefer the right, right like batch, batch, like writes in batches. So that's pretty much from my side. Um, thank you. Mm -hmm.